Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video today of Cephalo Ed. I apologize, everybody, for this late video. I had some technical difficulties last week, so I had the squid. I bought some squid. I dissected I dissected a few during the week to have some fun, like at some of them, to see if it was male or females. And this pack I had it had like at least like seven squid in it, so I dissected. I think it was like the fourth squid, and that's when I was actually going to make the video. And I had I did it outside. My dad held the camera for me, but it was so blurry. There was so much glare as well, and so it, you couldn't see it all. So. I threw all the squid away before that, thinking that this was going to be a good video, and which it was, but there was just so much glare, and you couldn't see any of the organs or anything. It was really bad with the uh, video, so I didn't have any squid for that week and the whole weekend, so I had to wait, and my parents actually found some squid at Big Y near us, so it was absolutely awesome. And which is really cool, these are local squid, so I'm more familiar with dissecting these. Unlike the ones I had last week, they were squid from California. And what's really cool is this squid's actually a lot meatier and bigger than the one I got from California. And so, let's get into the video, guys. So, let's look at our posterior side right here. So, this is where the mantle is, and these are where our two fins are. And as you guys know, these are the fins. This is what helps the squid move in the different directions it wants to go in. It moves forward, backwards, side to side. And we have our mantle here. This is where all of the major gold, or to me, it's like gold because this is where all the awesome stuff is. But really, this is where all the organs are. The vital, <laughs> vital organs are. This is where the hearts are. All that jazz and then we're gonna head up to here this is actually where the head is and this is where the head is we have our two eyes in which inside later we're gonna be uh, popping them out to get the pupils out because they're really cool and look like little glass balls which is amazing we have our funnel here in which you guys can see if I poke my little thing in here it goes all the way out in here into here so that's where right here you can actually kind of see, i don't know if you guys can see this is a more darker part that's where the digestive gland and actually the ink sac are and this is where it lets out all that stuff and especially if it has to go to the bathroom it'll let out all of that um excess waste and then we have our arms right here and this is actually called the anterior side so it'll kind of help you guys out a little bit anterior we have the arms and the posterior mantle. So it's pretty cool. And so I'll bring you guys up closer to show you the chromatophores. So take a look at that. I apologize for my camera. I'm just having a hard time focusing. Oh, there we go. So as you guys can see, all the chromatophores right there. There's a special trick you can do too. You can rub your finger against the chromatophores and they will actually start to activate meaning they will start to move and stuff but i've been trying to do that lately um for last week and it didn't work out so well i rubbed my finger against it to create some friction against the chromatophores to release them and start making the chromatophores a move but nothing really happened but you can do that if you probably can do that if you kept them catch them freshly caught like right off the bat as soon as you catch them and once they die you'll be able to actually really see the chromatophores start to move but cool down so that's when you really be able to see the chromatophores in action it's really, truly amazing so we're going to start with our arms here and like what i said so this squid's pretty big and from the one i compared the one that i dissected a lot last week um just makes it look a little small and we got so we got our amazing suction cup here, and we have so we have this double row of suction cups on each arm, and you'll be able to. I don't think this is a male. It is hard to definitely identify a squid um, gender in real life. Like when you when I do the videos for you guys, 
when you just uh, find the gonad to look at the heptacotylus. It's easy doing that, but once you do it in real life, it's a little bit harder because everything kind of blends in more. In which if you make a drawing, you make it pop out. You can tell where it is, but the drawing is, uh, I mean, in real life, it's a bit difficult to realize that. So if we can't identify if it's a male here, then that's okay because we are going to be going inside of this way. And so here are our tentacle studies. At the end of our tentacles, just only at the end of the tentacles, we have the suction cups here. So let me bring you guys a little bit closer. You guys can see this, but right here, we have some tentacles. Oh, it's so blurry. Well, I apologize you can't see that. This camera's not doing so well at focusing, but I'll describe it to you. So at the tip of the tentacles, you do have that double row of suction cups, and they're just only going to be at the tip here. They don't go down because these are the feeding suction cups. So what they will do is, say if there's a fish right here, these tentacles are going to go out and grab it just like that. And what they're going to do, going to come in, you're going to have both the tentacles on there, and they're going to bring it in right to the mouth. Then the arms will be able to enclose it, and then that's when they'll be able to feed off of that fish. So that's really how it um, uh, feeds and actually hunts as well. It's really fascinating and truly bizarre. Then here you got all the arms. Um, I want to try and pop one of these that way back and show you guys. But in every suction cup, guys, I mentioned this to you in that pre-squid dissection video I made. In all the suction cups in the squid, you're going to get that suction cup just like that octopus, but inside you're going to get that ring with those rigid teeth on there. And that's what also really helps grip onto their prey really good so they cannot go away once at all. So it's, it's a really scary technique they have with the suction cups because you know that suction is super strong but once you end that ring on there it makes it more tough and locks you right in it's pretty scary actually i can't imagine what it's like if you were if you were a fish getting attacked by a giant squid because the suckers are like this big and then the rings are like that big it's really scary because then you're really able to see how the rings Really look. I don't know if you guys have watched this video. Uh, maybe you have. But um, it's called Colossal Squid. And my the, there's a guy in there called Steve O'Shea. He was actually my inspiration to actually to study cephalopods. Cy Montgomery is also an inspiration for me as well. But. Steve O'Shea was my first one because he was the first, he was the person to first dissect the colossal squid. And that was truly one of the coolest things I've ever seen because the colossal squid was only seen once. And it's actually bigger than the giant squid but not as long, it's more fatter. So here, pretend you have a giant squid here. This is a giant squid. The colossal squid, take the mantle, bring it closer and make it fatter. That's the colossal squid. And the arms are huge, but what's different is, I, uh, I was, as I was talking, I was trying to show you guys the, the rings, but they're just too small for this to focus on. But just like the giant squid, you're gonna have that sucker here with the ring around it but instead you have that suction cup but it's a hook it's a literally a hook and it's one of the most scariest and deadliest things i've ever seen in my life and they're absolutely huge it's like their beak but it's like the the only the top of their jaw but on every single suction cup so this is even worse than the giant squid because once it latches onto you these 
uh, hooks too are able to move 360 degrees so you can move any direction you want and those hooks will latch onto you to no matter what it's super super scary but absolutely amazing i would have loved to have been there to dissect it with them um well i just want to give you guys that fun little story as i was doing this but Again, I apologize that my camera can't let you see these rings. It's super fascinating. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. And so, let's open up the mantle. This is the really cool part. One of my favorite parts to look at the squin. My favorite part, though, is looking at the beak. Is that's it's one of the coolest things of the squin, I, I think. <laughs> Here's where we'll really be able to identify if it's a male or female. Because male organs, they have their testes, but they are not clear. So they're like all a, a cloud, kind of, where you know, aren't able to see it. Oh, this is interesting. Um, and then the females, they're actually clear. And you'll have the eggs inside. And that will be able to help you. And then right here, too. You'll be able to see, uh, um, it's called a seminal vessel. Um, I think I said that right. Um, but it is called the seminal vessel. I'm just trying to make sure my pronun pronunciation is right. And so that will be right here. It'll kind of be like a little curl. It kind of looks like a, the icing on a cin cinnamon roll. And then it'll go out when you have that clown. And those will be the testes. But then the female, they're clear. They're going to show the eggs and the ovaries. And so kind of like this. But this one's a little bit weirder. I'm not sure what that black stuff is. It probably, this is definitely female because I do not see that seminal vessel. But this one's a little bit more stranger. I'm not sure why it's black in there. Oh, maybe it could be the nudimental glands. That's probably what they are, nudimental glands. Because the nudimental glands are probably, they are always around right at this area right here. So those are probably nudimental glands. And you guys can't see the eggs because they probably caught this thing right after breeding. And so the gonad, if it was full of eggs, it would be all the way up here. And this is, the gonad always covers basically the whole entire top of the posterior side. But... So it looks like they caught it after breeding, so we won't be able to see those eggs, but for 100%, this is a female. And right here, guys, wow, this is a very uh, big ink sac compared to the last one I dissected. But this is our ink sac right here. Inside here, under all this, we have our stomach. And this huge part you guys are looking at right here, this is the digestive gland or the cecum. And... Right here are the intestines, and then when the squid is threatened, needs to go to the bathroom, um, it's going to use this funnel, and you can see it leads right here. And so once it needs to go excrete some feces or something, or needs to squirt ink, it's going to come right out of here, and then boop, right out of the funnel. And if it was a female, you'd be able to see this little, uh, I mean a male, sorry, you would be able to see this little thing right here. It would be a, that would be its penis. But that's not there because it's a female. But this is pretty cool, actually. It's really interesting. And so under this, guys, too, all right here. I know you guys can't hear, but I can feel it with this metal thing I have. It, this is called the pen. And what this is, this is its shell from millions and millions and millions of years ago. But over those millions of years ago, as squid started to evolve, adapt in different places, mutate, their shell started to decrease in size and get smaller. And become more agile, more flexible. And so as time went along, the shell started to disappear and turn into this pen. And it's really interesting because it's not, it doesn't feel like a bone. 
it's very flexible and it kind of actually feels identical to our fingernails. It's very flexible. And I'll show you guys that later. Well, actually more soon. But anyways, um, I want to show you guys this too. I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me bring it up closer to you guys. But it doesn't look like you guys. Oh, maybe you can. So right here, these are little cartilage locks. And right in the funnel, right here, we have these other cartilage little kind of keyholes. So pretend these are our keys, and they're going to lock in right into here. And this is what actually keeps the mantle in place. And what this will do, the water is going to go into the mantle. And this will be able to close, and that will be able to open. It's absolutely insane how they do this. And this also is in that show Colossal Squid. The mantle will be able to close and open, so let that water out or let that water in to filtrate through the body so it's able to breathe. And so this is really how it's able to do that because of these locks. You know, if it didn't have those locks, it wouldn't, the mantle would be a little bit strange. You want to be able to lock in when it wants to to keep that water in. And right here, too, guys, this, this is our lung. And you guys can't see it right now. Maybe if I bring you guys closer. But in this lung, so you can, it looks very feather-like. And if you guys are doing a squid dissection, a really cool thing to do is take a big container of water and put the squid inside of it. And what this will do, this will be able to um, inflate all of the organs in the squid so you actually really be able to see how it looks like in water. And then you'll be able to see the uh, gills really clear up and you'll be able to see that feather like gill. It's really incredible to look at and observe. But right now, we're going to take a look at the beak. And a cool little thing to do to really look at the beak is you can cut right at the top here. And what you can do is you'll be able to really take a look at the beak, but not also just the beak, but you can take a look at the esophagus. It does take a little bit of time because I don't want to damage the beak at all. Now in here, if you guys are wondering what's all inside besides the eyes, in the eyes, you're gonna get the brain. You're gonna get that donut brain, and then you're also gonna get some optic ganglions, which is their optic lobes. You're gonna get some extreme nerve cords going here where the neurons go through into the arms, and then all the way up here. It's really cool to observe, but uh, it would be a lot easier to see if I had like a bigger squid, say if we dissected a humble squid, you'd really be able to see that. But, um, That'll be my, you know what, that'll be one of my next videos. I'll give you guys a brief, cool video on the brain and optic lobes of cephalopods. Because it's truly outstanding and it's extremely alien-like. I think all you guys will like that. It's really cool. Once you guys do this too, once you cut that up, you're going to get some tissue that's going to be hanging on to the arms. This is what keeps the buccal mass in place. And the buccal mass is what keeps the beak in place. You guys are going to be really stunned by how the beak looks when I take it out. It's, it's kind of mind-blowing. All right, here we go. So this will be good enough. So I'm a little tweezer. I'm going to take out the beak. All right, check this out, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, can you guys see that well? Probably can't. Can you see here? Oh, there we go. All right, guys. 
Here's our beak. It's mean looking, it's deadly looking. It can pierce through just about anything. And if you guys are wondering, how the heck can this pierce through anything when the bottom here is so flimsy? It's, it just feels exactly like our fingernail. And that is the really cool part of the beak because the buccal mass is what holds that flimsy part in place. But then you get that tip that is extremely, extremely sharp. If you take the beak out and just point it on your finger, just put a little pressure, it hurts. But imagine when it's in full action, when this squid is alive and you have that beak chowing down. It's, it's like a parrot-like beak, but I think for me it's like 10 times worse. Because it can just slice and dice. And I would feel really bad if I was a prey and I got locked in the jaws of a squid. I would, that would not be fun at all. That poor thing would have a very bad day. It probably wouldn't feel anything though. Here's the top part of the beak. Really interesting. Look how sharp this is. You guys see that? Well, if you can, I know it's really blurry, but try and look at the tip. Right, oh, look right there. It's so sharp. It's sh and so, we're going to push the buccal mass out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is, one second, I got to cut some of the tissue that's surrounding the buccal mass. And you do take the beak out, it is a little bit harder to take out uh, buccal mass a little bit because you got all the tissues and it gets just really flimsy and it's hard to grasp on with a tool. All right, yes, got it. All right, here we go, guys. This is really cool. So, and you guys, oh, my hand's in the way. But what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to pull the buccal mass, but I want you to look right here. I want you to see what happens. Guys, see some movement in there? Yep, nice. So, right here, guys, look at that. You have the buccal mass. The beak is huge. Look at that little line. That's the freaking esophagus. It's so small. And that is why it's so dangerous for squid to eat huge whole food. Because if you get food, that's like. A little bit bigger than this uh, rod right here, it's gonna it's gonna kill it. So that is why it has that radula. Like I mentioned in, in some videos of the octopus, uh, how it eats, it just shaves down the food like this and makes it into smaller and smaller little particles of food. So it's really easily to go through the esophagus, through the brain, into the stomach, which is right here, and I want to show you guys this too, the systematic heart and the bronchial heart. It's really hard to see right now. They're probably all punctured. So if I can bring it closer to you guys so you guys can see this. So right here, you have two blobs, like gooey, snotty looking blobs. These are the hearts. So there's going to be a heart right here and a heart right here. Those are the bronchial hearts. And right in the middle, about here, Got to get that systematic heart. So those bronchial hearts will help punk, um, not punk, push that oxygen through the body to the systematic heart. Then that systematic heart is going to take over, but they all synthesize together, and the systematic heart will pump the oxygen and the blue blood throughout the whole entire body. 
it's pretty bizarre. It's really cool. Probably also one of the coolest things about the squid is how it has three hearts. And why it has three hearts too is because it has no bones. So it has like hydro bones, meaning there's no bones, but it uses their muscles, but their muscles act like muscular hydrostrat, which I mentioned in a few videos, um, how the muscular hydrostrat, it's just all the muscles working together and it's a whole lot stronger but it uses a lot more it uses a lot more of the heart to pump the blood and that is why it has three hearts because if it did have bones it probably wouldn't have one heart and be able to last a lot longer but because it doesn't have bones then hearts need to pump a lot faster enable for the blood to really move through the muscles so everything's able to move where it wants to go. And so, let's have a little bit of fun. We're going to take the arm to the squid. Now, I've done this many times last week, and I can never get the quill or pen to stay in one piece. So when I do this, I think I put a little too much pressure to where I break the pen. You gotta put a lot of pressure on it. This guy's really fighting back. Oh, I think I actually got it. Ooh, getting a little messy. I think I got it. It's a little bent. It's okay. And try and cut the skin off of the quill so we're able to take it out. Oh, well, oh, I broke it a little bit, that's okay. Oh, there we go. Now look at this. That's the quill. It's really cool. Look how flexible it is though. It's crazy, and it holds that body in place. It's really cool. Then now you're really able to see the um, the lungs. And actually, right here, one of the bronchial hearts still stayed on. I think actually both of them. Yeah, both of them did. Both of the bronchial hearts stayed on right here. See those little blobs? Those are bronchials. You got the lungs. And yeah, it's really cool. And let's do where I put the pen. Let's try and open the ink sack. So you can actually kind of make it like your way back when, where you take that little feather and you take the ink and that's how you, and you write down. That's kind of what you could do with this. It's really cool. Try and get it open without it going everywhere. Here we go. Very messy ink sack in here. And you can write the ink down and stuff. It's really awesome, guys. It's a cool little trick I've learned at Mystic Aquarium when I went there for homeschooling. It's absolutely awesome. And last but not least, guys, I'm going to pop the eyes. Actually, you probably won't really need to pop the eyes. You can just puncture it and take out the pupil. And I'll show you guys the pupil, and that'll be it for our video. Check that out, ladies and gentlemen. That... Right here is the pupil. It's really hard to see because it's see-through, but 
I can see it really good. This is the pupil of the eye of the squid. Look at that. It is so amazing. Now imagine if we were dissecting a giant squid, the pupils are freaking huge because squids have the largest eyes in the world, about the size of a basket, uh, a basketball, a soccer ball, and that is literally the bigger than this pan. It's freaking insane because squids are about giant squids are about fifty to sixty feet long, and squids have literally one of the best eyes in the animal kingdom hold on i want to say that i don't know much about land animals so we'll just go with sea creatures they have the best eyes in the sea because they need to see where they're going they need to see what prey they're catching so they need these huge eyes to see exactly where the pinpoint stuff and so, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys got something out of that. I hope you guys learned something. Hopefully, maybe that would be pretty cool. But I just hope you guys really enjoyed this. I enjoyed this a lot. It was really fun doing this and doing this for you guys. I guess it's always really cool to show a squid dissection so you can really see what it looks like inside. And so... Please like this video, guys. Please subscribe. I'll absolutely enjoy and love the support. And hit that notification button. And I'll catch you guys up on the next video. And have a fantastic day, guys.